Hey guys, it's Meme, and today we are playing with two fun things. One, our newest stamp set called Bless Beyond Belief. Love this set. I'm going to use it a lot. And the Simple Stories Simple Vintage Country Harvest. Love this paper pack. And specifically from it, I'm using this piece. And the reason I chose this piece is I love this side. I'm not super fond of this side, so I really don't mind missing this one. So I chose to use this gorgeous piece. Now here's what you need to do. We're making, let me show you what we're making. We're making this gorgeous napkin ring. Are you kidding me? Look how cute this is. And I love to make napkin rings. Like every year, that's the thing I like to do. So here's what you're gonna need to start. This piece of chipboard is not our heavy album chipboard. This is a thinner chipboard. And this guy is one and a half by six, which is even better because you're going to get a lot for very little product. Now, what I did was I curled it like this. Now, I suggest putting this like on the edge of your table and like um, say this is the edge of your table, put your palm on it and pull it with the other palm. But if you have to do it like this, just do it like this. And you don't have to get this perfect round. I'm really not looking for perfect round. I'm more looking to kind of break the fiber so that I can do a good turn of it, if that makes sense. We want a good turn. The other thing I did, which I should have pointed out, was I marked this at half an inch. Do you see that? I gave myself this pencil mark telling me that's half an inch in, and that's where I'm going to glue it. So I'm going to put a little glue from the half inch mark out to the edge, like so. Some hot glitter glue, and then I'm going to run this over to it. Now listen, if you don't get a perfect round, see how that's not perfectly round? You really don't have to stress about it. I am going to kind of play with it and make that kind of happen. But by the time you wrap a napkin with this guy, it'll work out. It'll be fine. All right, here's a tip. Take your reverse tweezers, stick them on here like this, and then you can move on to the next part. So I'm just gonna sit that out of the way. All right, so let's move on to the designer paper. I love this paper. And you only need a one and a half by six inch piece for this. So you're gonna get a lot of these out of very little paper. Now, let me show you something. We're gonna curl it again like we did on the other because we want to make it easy to glue it on. But I learned something. If you'll place your um, bone folder down on your work surface with the paper between it and the surface, and the, the taller you pull up, the curlier your paper is. See that? What I mean by that, if you pull out like this, it's gonna be flatter. But if you pull up like that, it's gonna be curlier. Those of you that use a straightening iron to curl your hair, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The, the tighter or the straighter out you do, the more curl you get. You see that? So just when you're pulling it, just pull it straight up from the surface and you'll get a good curl. All right, let's go back to this guy. Now I'm gonna take my art glitter glue. Now here's something I did. I do not think it matters at all, but in my brain, it needed to be done. Where this guy meets, there's a little bit of a lip. See that? I took my art glitter glue and I filled that lip up. I don't know why, don't think it needs it, but in my mind, it made it a little smoother. Then I just ran my glue around. Now the more glue you put on, the more is gonna squish out. You already know that, right? It's gonna happen. So just cover this guy in a thin coat of glue. And like I've said before, Camera is deceiving. It looks like I'm globbing it on, but I'm not. I'm scratching it on, okay? So there's that. Now, what I did here was with my edge of my paper, I overlapped the seam because I feel like this is adding more stability. So if you wanna use these year after year after year, overlapping that cardboard seam is gonna help with that. It'll just give you a little extra stability. All right, and then we're gonna wrap this guy around just like so. Get it nice and turned. See, isn't that nice? If you take the second to do that curling with the bone folder, it makes this super easy. All right, then underneath here, add some glue. Don't worry about this seam because we're gonna cover it up. So you don't have to worry about it showing or anything. This is all gonna get covered. All right, we're gonna let this one dry. Again, if you want to, you can take your little reverse tweezers and set that to the side. Now let's move on. The next step, which is super fun. Let's do some stamping. All right, so I have a two inch I think it's two inch, it might be slightly bigger. Hexagon punch, love this guy. I see the size of it, it's perfect for this project. And that's what I did here. I punched one of those pieces out and now we're gonna stamp on it. Now from this stamp set, let me show you this. You're able to take the words grateful, thankful, and blessed and mix our sentiments with it. And this works perfect. For the one I made earlier, I did grateful, because of you, is that what I did? No, grateful to know you. I thought that'd be cute at the table when somebody sits down, grateful to know you. For the one we're doing today, we're gonna do thankful for you. So I think that'll be cute too. All right, so for ink, 
I did a couple of things, and you'll probably be able to tell when you see pictures. I used two different inks. I used um, a darker ink on some, but then I was like, why don't I just use the same ink that I'm inking with? So this is my Distress ink, and I'm stamping it just like this. And I'm even gonna show you that I did something a little different. Let me see if I can find the very first one I did. Here we go. All right, do you see this one? Do you see how I did it with the flat side out? And then after it, I did it with the points out. I don't think it matters, but I kind of like the points better. So I changed from here to here. I don't think anybody's going to notice when they sit down at my table. But for me, I was like, eh, I like it pointed out better. All right, thankful for you. Super simple, just like that. Then I want to ink the edges of this little guy. Now remember, if you're doing what I'm doing and you're using Distress Ink, that stays wet for a minute, so you don't want to get your hand in it. Then I'm just going to run around and ink, just like so. Now for the leaves... I cut using the free SVG that I give you with my stamp sets on my Cricut Joy. I cut out a bunch of leaves for us to use for samples when we were making our card samples for you guys. And I had a lot left over. You're gonna see how many I had left over. And here's how we treated them, okay? We cut them out. I basically cut five, let me just show you. So I went into my stash and I chose five colors of paper I felt like were fall leaf colors. And then I cut this five different times. Once on green, once on orange, once on red, once on khaki, once on brown, I think. And that's how I got all my leaves cut. Then I stamped them with the stamp. Super easy to do that, okay? Then um, Shannon inked them for me. She loves to sit down and do that. So she did the inking on the outside. And now we're going to curl them. Now, because these aren't going flat in there where they're going to live, you can do a lot of curling. I actually think... If you were to crinkle these up and then do this, I think they'd be really pretty. But you see how I kind of got that S shape? Because they're going to kind of float off the edge. I think that's kind of pretty. So just curl it wherever you want to, ever how you want to, using the edge of your bone folder and make them feel a little real. Now, if you're watching in our, um, in our reveal video, Shannon said, these would make a good garland. Not these. I used every one of them. <laughs> Not everyone. I have like five left over. But I had already thought about using this for my home decor this year because I just think those will be so pretty. Okay, let me show you how we line it all up. So, I took, you can do this ever how you want to do it, but I took my tallest leaf and I kind of pretended like it was kind of like a feather in my hat or whatever, and I put it up high just like this. Don't you guys love when your stamping paper habit can be also home decor? It's one of my favorite things. I just love it. So there's that. I'm trying not to get glue on my work surface because I'm trying to keep it clean, but that's not happening. Then I took my next largest leaf and it's going to live like this, this way. So add a little glue to the bottom, a little glue to the stem and put it down like this. Love this, right? Love it. And then I'm going to take my last one and it's going to go in the center, kind of split the difference there just like this. And just think, guys, this is just paper. And if you dig in your stash, if you dig in your scraps, you probably have the stuff to do this with. By the way, I, I meant to mention, because I know you guys are going to say it in the, in the comments, and I should have said it earlier, but you totally could do this with paper towel or toilet paper rings. I'm just at work and didn't have that, so I have a lot of scrap ch um, chipboard from projects, so that's what I used. I meant to say that and forgot. All right, the next thing I did, and don't be scared of this. Let me find my pencil. I won't use a pencil because you won't be able to see that. I'll use this memento marker. All right, the next thing I did was I just came out here and I made a circle and a circle kind of on the leaves, on the leaves, leaves. So I could see that and that's where I'm going to punch with my crocodile. Now, I didn't measure, line up, nothing. No one is going to compare them. No one's going to sit there and say, yours doesn't match up with mine, et cetera, et cetera. Then I just punched roughly in that area like so. Because I'm going to tie this on with a ribbon. I think it looks pretty. Not ribbon, but with baker's twine, I think that looks pretty. There's my second hole, just like that. Now, let's put it onto our ring. So, bring the ring back over. It's good and dry. You can ink this if you want. I did not. The reason I didn't is because if I use white napkins, I was a little afraid it might tint them a little bit. So, I did not ink the ring. Okay, let's tie this on. I'm going to use some baker's twine. I'm loving this chunky orange baker, baker's twine. Cut a piece of that off. Now, you can use your bead threader if you need to, but while ago when I did this, I noticed that that hole is perfect, just like that. So you wanna feed it through the back side first of one of them, okay? Then you're gonna take this and put it through the ring itself, because we're literally gonna tie this on here. And then you want to go right behind it and put the other side in. 
Again, if you need your bead threader, no shame. I did that for my first few and then went, oh, I don't really need it here. All right, then I'm gonna line this guy up and get my twine even, okay? But before I tie this, I'm going to place it where I want it. Remember I told you I wanted to cover that seam? See, I've gotten off, so I wanna find that seam, which is right here, okay? So what I wanna do is glue this down to the seam, pull my baker's twine back through. So just lifting it with my thumb to one side, I'm gonna come in here and add some glue. You guys can probably see that better than I can at this point. So add a little glue right here, okay? And then I'm just gonna press this into that and just hold it for a second. You don't have to hold it too long. You know how fast art glitter glue dries. But that way it stays in that spot. You see what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> that's funny, we were talking about my sayings. I think you see what I'm saying is like one word. You see what I'm saying? So glue that down. Then you're just going to tie a bow. You can let that dry a little longer than I did if you want. It's not gonna hurt anything. I just want it to stay over the seam if I use these year after year. And listen, I hear it all the time. Everybody says, you can't use these year after year. You're making them with paper, blah, blah, blah. I gotta be honest. A lot of the stuff I make with paper, I literally use year after year and couple reasons. Number one, people don't demolish the stuff. They're very kind to it. And number two, the more tattered it gets, the prettier it looks. Like it's, it's a fall piece, right? Okay, one last little element. So in our store, we carry these bags of multi buttons. I love these guys. There's so many different ones in here. And I don't know what it is about me and fall, but fall calls for buttons. If you've ever watched any of my old videos, I have some pumpkins I made with trivets. I'm gonna see if Tamitha can link that for you guys because that is classic using paper to home decor and you guys will love it. All my thrifter folks will love that one, okay? But something about buttons and paper for fall. So here's what I did. I stuck a button on here and did you notice I just used my art glitter glue? You don't have to. You can hot glue this if you want to. I'm just gonna art glitter glue this down and then that tip I taught you a while ago, you can take your reverse tweezers or a clothespin, whatever you got, stick it on here and hold it down, which is perfectly fine. And then you can just sit it aside to dry. So that's what I'm gonna do with that one. But let me show you the ones I did get done. Okay, so I have this one and Shannon put that in. Isn't that so pretty? That beautiful white linen napkin, so crisp. Then here's the others. So these are thankful. Do you see the difference in the ink? I really don't think it matters. I could have done even like orange and red and green, whatever. And then these say grateful to know you. And these say grateful to know you. I think I did three grateful and three thankful, but aren't they great? Aren't they beautiful? I just love them. I think these are gonna look so cool on my table. And I love, love, love when we can mix paper and home decor. It's one of my faves. Now, here's what your challenge is. I wanna see your paper and home decor projects. If you make something like this, using one of our stamp sets, using some of the paper, whatever that we have in the store, please share it with us on our customer gallery. We love to see what you're making and it's kind of turned into our, our own kind of personal Pinterest. There's over 2000 posts over there for you to get inspiration from. So once we add this guy, I have six, cause my table seat six. So that's why I did six. Where I'm putting this, it seats six people, but you could totally make you could even like personalize these. Instead of putting this, you could put so thankful and put somebody's name on here. Imagine that like a so thankful Jared is here, you know, or whatever, like put a name. Wouldn't that be cool? Love them. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It is free. That's, that's been a question I've had a lot lately about subscriptions. Because we have a club set, like a subscription club for stamps, and then we also have subscribe to YouTube, it's been confusing. But subscribing to YouTube is free. You just click the red subscribe button, and all that does is allow you to find out when I have a new video posted. So if you hit the red subscribe button, it tells YouTube you want to know when I have a video posted. And if you hit the bell beside it and tell YouTube to send you a notification every time I load, you'll even get an email or a text message or something every time I load a video. All right, guys, the best, most important thing you can do for me today to help out my channel is give this video a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know, hey, people like this video, share it around. Thanks so much for being here. And until next time, bye now.